Here's J.B. Buno. A mix-up between Brian Laundry and his mother that clears up one of the biggest questions in the Brian Laundry disappearance. Northport police telling WFLA.com they thought that they saw Brian Laundry return home with his Ford Mustang here in September, but mistook the driver for someone else. It was actually Brian's mother, Roberta Laundry. We're breaking it down here live on WFLA now. Hey there, everybody. JB Buno here with you live for an evening stream here alongside Eight on Your Sides. Justin Checker joining us there on the right side of your screen. This answers a big question going back to September. This is one of the top questions that we get here on WFLA Now pertaining to Brian Laundrie's disappearance in September. Of course, we're talking about the Ford Mustang being driven to the Carlton Reserve and coming back It was the Thursday, Thursday, September 16th, when Northport Police, Chief Todd Garrison in the press conference say that we know where Brian is. The reason that they thought that they knew where Brian was at the time, according to Josh Taylor telling WFLA.com and other media outlets within the last couple of hours, the reason was because that investigators saw someone return home on Wednesday, September 15th in the Ford Mustang. They saw the driver get out with a baseball cap and go into the house They thought it was Brian Laundrie when now Northport police are saying they made a mistake. It was, in fact, Roberta Laundrie, his mother, Justin. Yeah, obviously, this is the first week once this story broke, JB. It was September 11th is when Gabby Petito is reported missing. Now we're talking these days between when she's reported missing, that first week coming under scrutiny. And this is, this is big news, JB, because it's one of the big questions our viewers have had throughout this whole investigation is how did Northport police lose track of Brian Laundrie so quickly? We now know it was that Monday, two days after Gabby's reported missing, he went to the reserve to never come home. And now we find out that Wednesday when the Mustang came back, Northport police mistook the person returning home in the Mustang for his mom. And he was long gone at that point in the park to never come home. I'm just going to say what everyone else is saying. It, it's It's... A 23-year-old versus a woman who is, is literally quite old enough to be his mother. And Roberta, it's not even Chris Laundrie being yep. being mistaken for Brian because they both have very little to no hair on the top of their head. We're talking about Roberta Laundrie, who we have seen has a head of hair on her. So so wearing the baseball cap was, the, was part of the off. mix-up yeah. here, according to Josh Taylor. First and foremost, let me just talk about Josh Taylor for a second. Okay, he's not the one who who made this mistake, okay, this is, this is now, he represents his department, speaks on behalf of his department, but, and he's the public information officer, this is him admitting to a mistake made by his department, and the quote that he gave was that they are built kind of, they're kind of built similarly, that they have a similar build as far as Brian Laundry and his mother Roberta Laundry. I'll read some some more uh, some more quotes here. When the family reported him on Friday, that was certainly news to us that they had not seen him. We thought that we had seen Brian initially come back into that home on that Wednesday, and the reason that they thought that they saw him because they thought it was Roberta, or excuse me, they thought it was Brian, and it was in fact Roberta, and that's why Garrison stands up there with the world watching and says, "We know where Brian is because the investi- his officer, his department." That was theirs. Thought that they saw Brian return home, but that was it. Was in fact Roberta. This is a case of mistaken identity by by law enforcement, and it's Josh Taylor now. The date being October twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. So more than a month later, it's Josh Taylor. You know, facing the music, so to speak, looking into the camera and saying that his department made made this mistake, this big mistake that answers a monumental big question that has been looming and been asked repeatedly here on our WFLA Now streams. And that particular moment was that press conference with Gabby Petito's father, Joseph Petito, that Thursday when he made this passionate plea for help and then the chief was asked that question. We know, JB, that moment has come under some serious scrutiny that the chief would say, we know where he is, and it turns out it was a case of mistaken identity now that they're saying they mistook Brian for his mom. And there also some more reporting in these last few days since uh, Brian's remains were confirmed to be found. Um, our colleague over at News Nation, Brian Enton, has reported that police had set up some surveillance cameras around the family home down there in Wabasso Avenue, but they missed him leaving to go to the reserve. Uh, so again, this is these first crucial few days, JB, after Gabby is finally officially reported missing that Saturday. By Monday, Brian is long gone to the reserve, and now we know why the chief in that press conference you see on your screen there made this comment about knowing 100% where he is, and turns out they were completely wrong. 
We're going to feature your hashtag hey jb you see it underneath our names here on the left and right side of your screen hashtag hey jb hashtag hey justin as we do here in wfla now we feature what you have to say we very much care about what you have to say in our social media comment section we're going to feature your comments in response to this if you use one of the hashtags again it's hashtag hey justin or hashtag hey jb we can pluck your comment out of youtube live out of facebook live or twitter and we can feature it here on our stream on our live stream if you don't want us to feature your comment just don't use a hashtag we'll let your comment continue scrolling up the screen here but uh justin before i start to, we're going to look for them now here hashtag hjb hashtag hey justin i would imagine what, what do you think the response is going to be to this to this latest report and really this admission of a mistake by josh P taylor on on behalf of his police department i think a lot of us have just been puzzled you know when they knew the van was back there the saturday night they knew the family had turned over the the contact for stephen berlino and the question from the, from the get-go was, had Northport Police ever actually had their eyes on Brian? And now this raises question whether they even saw him in those few days since he had returned home. And I imagine it just leads to, to some more, you know, outrage from our viewers who have followed this story closely, who have been asking all along, how, how did they let him slip, you know, under their, their fingers like that, right to a reserve, not too far from the home? And we know Gabby's body was found eight days after she was reported missing. It took 34 days to finally locate his remains in the reserve that you see on the screen. So, again, uh, Josh Taylor has been given a few more interviews in the last couple of days, trying to set the record straight on some of these lingering questions from the early days of this investigation. Uh, but this admission, I think, is just going to, um, you know, uh, viewers are not going to feel good about this admission for knowing what we know now. Yeah, and, and we, we have, of course, uh, spotlighted some of the comments here on social media that have been extraordinarily critical of the Northport Police Department. And it didn't look good at the time. It really doesn't look good now, considering how large this case has gotten gotten as far as the, the media attention and the public fascination really around the world. Yeah. So that, that mistake, uh, it looked really bad in a 24-hour period for Chief Todd Garrison to stand up there and say, we know where Brian is, we know where Brian is. And then the next day of course he's he's gone and it's the subject of a of a of massive how did that happen sort of live stream that we had yeah. and now here we are more than a more than a month later and and the all that time passing doesn't help this look any any better for for northport police as far as what we're seeing i, I already there are, have already been some comments that i've been going through here on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, let's just say that they don't have language that is appropriate here share. for this live stream. That's that's how how dumbfounded I think that I think it's fair to say that dumbfounded, folks are dumbfounded, dumbfounded people are and, and and, and now there's these questions, too. Stephen Bertolino, some of his comments saying that he had told the FBI that Brian had left to the reserve does not add up to the timeline, JB, of not until Friday, um, the 17th, when they said, we don't know where he is. So that thing also adds to this confusion. Who knew what when? Stephen Bertolino says he knew that, that Brian had left for the park that Monday. Why wasn't there more of a, a, an indication that he's... MIA earlier that week until the Friday when they officially filed the report, which we did receive a copy today, JB, but you saw that was completely blacked out that Northport Police gave us the missing person report on the Friday and is completely redacted. Yeah, the and we you know we, we shared that out uh, as well. I'm waiting for our system to cooperate here as far as animating your, your comments on screen. Looking forward to um, looking forward again there's just so much disbelief but let me make something clear there are people now that are asking uh are, are chris and roberta laundry going to be arrested and this is this is not this isn't this this is a mistake by by the police department and and roberta laundry has been in and justin you can you can share this with me because you've been back and forth between northport and yeah. every clip that i have seen roberta laundry she's almost she's it's almost weird if she's not wearing a baseball cap i mean she's usually wearing yeah. that forward she facing has, she hat has short hair but she, she's usually seen wearing the baseball cap we know there was um those photos we saw that emerged last uh, uh wednesday um that fox news digital got uh brian or sorry chris and roberta when they went over to the reserve I believe she's wearing a baseball cap in those photos as well as we wait for the comments should be i just pulled back my notes um so as you know, the first day we covered this story was that Monday, September 13th. And one of the questions I asked Josh Taylor at the time was, is the boyfriend cooperating with Northport Police before we confirmed he was the fiance? This was his direct quote to me, JB, on that Monday. 
from Josh Taylor. Yeah, I'm not really at liberty to discuss that. Again, we're an assisting agency. We'll see where that goes, obviously. I'm not at liberty to say whether he's working at our level of wanting him to be. So that was the official word from Josh Taylor on that Monday when we now know he had already Brian had already left for the park to, to never come home. Uh, and now we, we know the, the skeletal remains were found and there's still lingering questions about how he died. Uh, but again, just these first couple days coming under new scrutiny with these comments from Northport Police that they thought Brian returned home on Wednesday when now they're saying it was his mother. Mother Roberta Laundry. Let's get to, to some uh, of the comments that are beginning to come in here, but uh, this doesn't really, for people asking online, and again, use hashtag AJB, hashtag AJustin with your comment, we can feature it on screen. This, this doesn't change the timeline all that much. No. It's more of a clarification on why police thought that they knew where Brian was one minute and then he was gone the next, or at least he had got been, or he was already gone. Remember now, Stephen Bertolino, the attorney for Brian Laundry, uh, originally shared that that the family lost uh, him on the Tuesday. Lost him on the Tuesday, but it was in fact on the Monday. Monday that being yep. Monday, September thirteenth. Let me let me just make some, make an observation that is within the realm of possible. That is very important, and uh, there, there's so much that could. But I want to talk about what is within the realm of possible here, as I call it on stream. Okay. Brian Laundrie's remains, uh, the, the skeletal remains found at the Carlton Reserve, the, 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 par the partial skull, the dental records that would go on to confirm that, yes, that those skeletal remains belong to, to Brian Laundrie. We have no idea. We have no idea when Brian Laundrie was deceased, when he died. Or how, how it happened. Or so how it happened. Those are still under But if he different. disappears on Monday the 13th, by the time this is all going on, by the time that the Ford Mustang is driven back to the home in Northport, by the time that Chief Todd Garrison stands up there and says, we know where Brian is, to the big, massive live stream that we had when everyone was crowding on the front lawn of the home that Friday night, yep. the night of Friday, uh, September 17th, while this is all going on, it's entirely possible that Brian Laundry is deceased at that point. Yep. The remains being skeletal and the remains being as as far along in the decomposition process as they were found out to be at the Carlton Reserve makes it more likely that the, that the, that the time frame in which Brian Laundry was, was deceased is way early on in this window, this window of beginning from, from Monday the 13th all the way through to mid-October, that it's way more likely that, that, the, that, that Brian Laundry was deceased in September versus October. And it could have been, it could have been that week. We just don't know yet though. And we hope that the anthropologist examination will provide us uh, with some answers. We also know there have been comments um, now that Stephen Berlino has uh, put himself out there for some, some network interviews. One of the questions he's been asked is whether the laundry parents were concerned about their son's safety when he did leave for the park. And I think the answer Stephen Bertolino gave was, well, he's, he's a, a young adult, grown man. You know, his dad could see he was upset, wishes he could have done more to stop him, but he really couldn't have stopped him from leaving on his own volition at that point to go to the park. And at least for Stephen Bertolino, they're saying that there was no imminent knowing that he might go harm himself or, or of that nature. So that's another comment that's been made in the last few days from Mr. Bertolino. Uh, let's get to, uh, all right, so the comments on our live stream here, uh, they are not, uh, the animation uh, isn't working as I understand it. We're going to try one more time to see if we can get it working. Um, I have had conversations with Facebook today. Facebook says that uh, they're, they're, having some, difficult, some technical difficulties with the ability for us to pluck comments out of the Facebook Live comment section. Oh, look, see, right, this is the there second time today where I've been talking about Facebook having some issues. Josh Menson mentioned Zuckerberg, and the moment he said Zuckerberg earlier, it animated on screen. <laughs> so now it's working, and it might just take a good 30 seconds for these comments to file in into our system. Maria, hashtag KJB, can, the, can Brian's parents be charged? And... And there's, there's nothing with this development that makes it any more likely that Chris and Roberta Laundry fa face charges. They return home with the Ford Mustang on that 13th, okay? And, and, they, and they go back into their, 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 they're retrieving the car. They're driving down public roads. They pull into their own driveway and go into their house and, and close the door. And... Uh, it's not their fault that police mistook Roberta for for Brian. That that's not that that's not that's not the laundry's fault. That's 
that's on that's on the Northport Police Department. They admit that they have made a mistake here. Uh, that that crucial day, that that crucial day, Wednesday, September fifteenth, uh, last month. And so, can they be charged? No, they, 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 there's nothing to suggest here that there's anything criminal that was conducted uh, by the laundries. But this this comment by Maria, and I'm just, Maria, you're not the only one to ask this question. A lot question. of people are asking this question. A lot of people asking yeah. this question. I'm, I'm a bit surprised by how many people are asking this question. But this, is, this just goes to show how much that Brian Laundrie's parents, Chris and Roberta, remaining silent and remaining silent through those crucial days in early September where they would not take the Petito and Schmidt phone calls and would not respond to Gabby's family just trying to find out where Gabby was and they were just staying silent and they were being represented at that time by Stephen Bertolino, their attorney. This just goes to show how much uh, bad bad juju there is out there on social media for Chris and Roberta Laundry. That's not necessarily a news term, but it, it, is, it is just indicative of just, again, how much people are, are looking at Chris and Roberta Laundry here and saying, what happened? What, what exactly happened? And I think that people want answers once and for all, Justin, from Chris and from Roberta. And Stephen Bertolino's you know, line of communication this whole time through is he advised his clients to say nothing. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration built towards this family in those early days is what did they know, if they know anything, and when. And they were radio silenced during those few first few days, except for the statements uh, that Mr. Bertolino started putting out. I believe it was Tuesday, um, the... 14th would have been the first day he put out a public statement saying it's a difficult time for both of these families. My clients are not going to say anything else. I think that's where a lot of the frustration has been directed at this family is that they were not really saying much in those early days before authorities found Gabby's body out west. Looking through just some of the comments that are coming in, there's, there is a lot of disbelief uh, here and they're coming in so fast. I am trying to pluck them as much as I can. Uh, everyone else is on the news here, so it's it's me uh, going through some of these comments and trying to get as many as we can uh, in our social media comment section. Uh, let's say a, a big thank you, of course, to Maria for filing in that comment, and we'll see if uh, Facebook cooperates as far as getting us the uh, the next one here. And one more note, JB, from our early days of reporting on this case. Um, I, I keep referring to my notes from that first conversation with Josh Taylor on Monday the 13th. At the time, he told me they had 10 detectives from their department assigned to work on this case. Uh, just another little tidbit how this was, you know, knew this was going to be a big case from the early days on. And again, we're all sitting here uh, with this admission today that despite the, the manpower and, and that they were putting towards this case in the beginning, they, they mistook uh, Brian returning home for his mother, Roberta. Again, J.B. Buno, Justin Shecker. If you're joining us, you can go to WFLA.com, the WFLA app. You can read the very latest on this story. Uh, again, um, a mix-up. A mix-up that explains a lot and doesn't, doesn't make the Northport Police Department look all that good, but it is them stepping forward and saying this is what happened. Again, this I, was the mistake. This this is why we said one thing one day, and Brian really wasn't wasn't really within. We didn't know where he was. The next, uh, yeah. It's, and, and I go back to what I said from Stephen Bertolino's public comments. Now he tipped off the FBI that Brian wasn't home. How did that information then not get back to Northport PD? So it's again, this I think further muddies the water in a way. JB, it answers one thing as to why Chief Garrison said what he said. But now it's, it's who knew what, when that week that this, this young man did not come home and we're all left here, you know, scratching our heads a little bit dumbfounded by this development. Northport Police, um, again, coming forward and telling WFLA.com, telling, really just confirming to me uh, via email that this was, in fact, what happened and this was the reason for the mix-up um, in, in September. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that it's... It, it, there's nothing, it's fair to say, and I've been saying it for weeks, there has been a lot of criticism online for the, the, the Northport Police Department. I, I think that that's an observation that is, that is it's not out of, the, out of the purview of anybody. I mean, it, you go on social media and there's quite a lot of critique there for the Northport Police Department, but you know what? Police... Police departments, folks, they make mistakes too. This was a mistake. And uh, Josh Taylor... Um, stepping forward to the microphone today and, and admitting, admitting that it was, in fact, um, a, a mistake on, on behalf of his department. He, his exact words were, no case is perfect. No case is, is perfect. So 
Um, I, 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 there's, there's been people, Justin, that have been reaching out to me asking whether or not there was going to be any accountability, any accountability for, uh, but that's, uh, that's something we'll, we'll have to find out in time, whether or not, uh, there's any, any ramifications. Um, but, but this isn't the first time that police have made a mistake and it's certainly not the last time that a, that a police department in this country will, will make a mistake. Uh, they're, they are, it's not a perfect system. They, they do the very best that they can, and this was, this was quite clearly a mistake. Patricia Fisher, hashtag KJB, none of this makes any sense. I, I think here's, here's the thing, and I, I have said throughout this story that the one constant is expect the unexpected. If, this, if you had told me today that, that this was going to happen, that the reason why, the reason why Northport police said that they knew where Brian was and that they didn't know where he was and that they got it wrong was because of a case of mistaken identity with involving one of the parents. I would have said, oh, okay, so, so they thought it was Chris Laundry and, and it was, or they thought, I'm sorry, they, they thought it was Brian Laundry and it was, it was, it was Chris. dad, Chris Laundry. Yeah. And we have it as, 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 this is a bizarre, a bizarre admission by Taylor on behalf of his police department saying, no, we, we, we got it wrong because we thought that Roberta Laundry was Brian. It, it's um, a lot of commenters here, Justin, saying it's so strange and odd that Roberta, his mother, who is is with all due respect to 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 Mrs. Laundry, I don't I don't I don't want to. She's older. She's considerably older yeah. than than her son, her twenty three year old son Brian. So to make that mix up. I want to know, so, okay, where are the officers? Are they using binoculars? Are they looking outside of their, their car window? What time of day are, are they seeing this? Is it late at night? Is it early in the morning? Is it midday? Uh, are, are you chomping on a, on a quarter pounder with cheese when this is happening in your, in your police car? Because let, let's, let's be real. Okay, sitting outside and, and, and doing surveillance of a home, it's, it is long, arduous hours where you're, you're, you have to pay attention at every moment for something to occur. But what was the re what was there a challenge that was present? That was the reason why investigators or officers or whomever it was at the house there made the mistake when they thought they saw Brian return home in the Mustang. Then they radioed it in or communicated back to the department. And, and they said it was Brian, but in fact, it was it was Roberta. We should also add for the timeline, this is that Wednesday, JB, where the first time they named Brian as a person of interest in the case. So I just want to add that nugget did come out the same day, that Wednesday, when they're now saying it was this, this case of uh, the mistaken identity. So um, that's important to mention as well, that this is all in those first few crucial days mm -hmm. when the story is slowly gaining momentum from a local story here covered in Florida, out west, the New York market. It was really that Wednesday, Thursday, when this became a big national sensation at this point in Northport coming under the microscope, especially that press conference. We keep talking about that Thursday. Do you know where he is? Chief says absolutely yes. And it turns out because he was given bad intel from the day before that his officers reported back to him that uh, they thought Brian had returned home in the Mustang when now they're saying it was his mom. Mistaken, mistaken identity. And, and also, too, we have heard, and, and it's been now shared publicly by News Nation's Brian Enton, and we knew this as the well, cameras, but we, yep. we didn't. Th there were cameras. So Brian Enton shares that there were cameras that were set up there and that they had surveillance of the house. And so do you then review that footage, that surveillance footage, and say, yep, there goes Brian walking into the house. He returns home in the Mustang. There he goes, goes inside. We know where he is now. We can say in the, in the press conference confidently that Brian is, in fact, at his family's home there in Northport. Does, does, the, is there, does the visual evidence, is there digital evidence that supports what the visual evidence was as far as the surveillance that they had? Uh, these, these are questions now because now we know that the home was under surveillance before, before Brian's, Brian's disappearance. Yeah, it just it further it, muddies the water. It, it, it does, it does. That's exactly why I'm bringing it up. And, and by that Tuesday, Wednesday, you started to have media folks, you know, covering outside the house there. I was there briefly on the Tuesday. And it's just, yeah, things obviously moved very quickly in those first couple of days. And by that Monday where the, the story is starting to get news attention, we, we now know that's, that's when the family says that Brian went to the reserve and never came home.
and and again clarifying from from Brian Enton that that the cameras were up early. Uh, so we've had to be between that Saturday and, and Monday then, right? I mean, those first, what, 36, 48 hours. Yeah, that the, the cameras went up pretty pretty soon. And again, that's, again, according to News Nation's Brian Enton. Um, yeah, just reading a couple of text messages here. Okay, so the next comment that we have coming through. And, okay, yeah, Barbara, you're up next. We're going to go to Barbara's comment here on WFLA now in the Facebook live comment section with hashtag hey JB hashtag hey Justin and let's see all right Facebook cooperate yes see it just takes a little a little bit of a, of a push I don't Barbara think Bri- Eisenberg here let, let me read it for for everyone listening because not everybody watches some people just listen in their cars hashtag hey JB of course I can't say for sure but wasn't Brian much taller than his mother and doesn't his mother have a full head of hair Let's start. Let's talk about the hair first. Yes, the yeah. the, the hair undeniably. Um, L- Roberta Laundry does have have a full head uh, of hair. We've seen her very much wear that baseball cap, but she does. She certainly has a good amount of hair on her head compared to her husband and 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 of course, of course, uh, Brian. But let's talk about height. So isn't he five foot eight? Is that he right? Is five, five foot, foot eight. eight. I had that confirmed from Northport Police. Five foot so eight. He's a f- Little mom's probably. I don't. We don't know. I don't know Roberta Laundrie's I mean, height. Her next but next to her husband, she's shorter than. Chris. But we don't know his yeah. height either. So we're we're trying to be very upfront and honest with you that we have seen Chris parents, and Roberta so yeah. many times. We're not sizing them up. We don't have you know technology that scans their height when they come out of their home to grab mail from the mailbox. But we we have seen their height and uh and Brian being five foot eight. If we're, let, let's just say, let's just say, let's just say, maybe Roberta's five, four. It's a four inch difference. So if you're somewhat, if you're on that street and, and you're Northport police and you're providing surveillance, let's say in an unmarked vehicle, and let's say you're there just hanging out on a public road and, and you see the Ford Mustang come home, can you, depending on your distance from the house itself, your proximity from the house itself, how equipped are you to distinguish between a five foot eight person and a five foot Four person again. That's just assuming that that Roberta is somewhere in that in that in that height. Um, don't know if Roberta is five four. If she's significantly shorter than that, then of course um, it it doesn't help police uh, as far as making this this mix up. But the the they had a similar build according to Josh Taylor. That was that was the words. That was him. Now you got to remember he is he's the spokesperson for the department, so he is kind of putting it out there that this is he's giving some reasoning as to why this this mistake was was made and he's saying it's because they had a similar build so as a journalist one of the things that i'm really eager for jb and we i go back to what we said about the the report from friday being completely redacted that we received at what point will this case be considered closed that we can close that we can see these documents unredacted no time soon i don't think I, do i'm think? just saying i i don't know when that'll be but i think we as journalists will do our best. We have pretty open sunshine laws here in our state to get access to this stuff. But it'll be nice to see, I don't know when it'll be, but you know, we will stay on top of that, JB, when we can get access to these unredacted reports to see what exactly was said in these early days of this investigation. And I really want to see the one that you tweeted out earlier that Friday completely blacked out. Because again, I go back to what I said before about Bertolino saying he had tipped off the FBI that Brian had gone to the reserve, but he wasn't officially reported missing to Northport PD till Friday. So I really want to see that unredacted report. I think that would help maybe unmuddy the water a little bit if we can get those reports. I don't know when they'll come out, but you know everyone here at News Channel 8, JB, myself, we will stay on top of that to hopefully provide you guys at some point in our reporting what these reports say when they're not completely blacked out. Can we just talk for a moment? And we, we are not doing a long stream here. We're going to be done relatively soon. But let me just point something out for our audience. I think that a lot of folks are commenting this without hashtags. So let me let me share an observation from our from our commenters and our loyal WFLA now viewers around the world. And and I'll try to share this this sentiment as as accurately as possible. Okay, there was so much that had to occur for Brian Laundry to be able to vanish. So many things that could have gone left or right, that could have gone thumbs up, thumbs down for us to to get to the to the end result. And that went that one one particular way. Let's go back to August. 
he's there in a domestic dispute and there's a uh, that happens in in utah and moab and police d- decide to split them up but that no charges are, are filed it was just a, a one night separation is what is determined in moab that occurs then brian laundry uh, you know returns home and gabby petito's father and and gabby petito's mother nicole they try so desperately to reach out to the laundries they don't get any response that goes in in seemingly seemingly now potentially depending on on your viewpoint and your perspective here in in brian's favor at least brian being able to get uh to 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 elude authorities if he is in fact attempting to elude authorities then uh, then somehow he is able to somehow on Monday the 13th, according to Bertolino, on Monday the 13th, somehow, some way, he's able to just poof, vanish. The, the family reports it as Tuesday the 14th, but it's actually the 13th. Then that Wednesday, he's police named- come home, or, or excuse me, the Mustang returns home, and police mistake, mistake Roberta Laundry for Brian. That, uh, again, is, is something that, that you couldn't have seen, seen coming. And then he has several days where he's already out there at the Carlton Reserve, apparently, or already out there at the Carlton Reserve. No one has any idea. No, not even police have any idea that he had but multiple Berlino's days. But Berlino's saying he told the FBI. That's where this whole just adds right. the money, you know, those first couple of days there. It's just, you know, it, it's, you, know, you wish you could play, you know, hindsight, you know. But I'm it, just, uh, I'd like to note that we, we see the comments out there that are, that have been uh, very, very, very critical of, of Moab police. We have seen the comments that have been um, very, very critical of Northport police. And we do know that there is this, there is this very vocal, vocal group out there of, of viewers that are saying that Brian Laundry like, slipped through the cracks, slipped through the cracks, and that there was all of these opportunities, these moments in time where perhaps they could have at least asked him the question, the, the question that's on everyone's minds, what happened to Gabby? Did something terrible happen to Gabby under your watch? And it just didn't happen. We never, ever, ever were given the opportunity to find out from Brian himself what happened to, to Gabby Petito. And, and, again, and, the, and Bertolino's advised the parents not to say anything. And to this day, they've not really said much of what, if anything, they did know. Uh, we know, JB, we've covered a lot about those days between the 1st and the 11th with the, the camping trip to Fort DeSoto we reported on. Um, obviously, his sister has been come under scrutiny for what she knew. When did she see her brother during those first couple of days? And, and now with, with the discovery last week that, that Brian's remains have been found, it, it's, you know, we'll, we'll never, you know, the, the unsatisfying ending that it's, he'll never you know, have a chance to make a statement, you know, at some point to investigators about what happened and what did he know when. And it's just... Yeah, Cheryl, I, Cheryl Lewis, hashtag KJB, so many red flags, red flags in this entire story. The average person has seen them. Why hasn't law enforcement seen them? And Cheryl, I'm trying to click the button to flash your comment on screen so we can show it, but it's just it's just not cooperating today. We had the problem in our earlier stream as well. It's just doesn't welcome to live streaming folks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we're here live with you, Justin Checker, JB Buno, and and there are just so many oddities, so many unexpected occurrences in this case that uh, where, where um, if things had gone the other way, Brian Laundrie is at least, at least approached by police or at least or, uh, you know, arrested on the federal arrest warrant that was in his name for debit card, yeah. for debit card fraud. There are so many moments in time where you think that it's oh so close to Brian Laundrie being at least questioned, at least in the same room as an officer, let's let's point that out. There was never a moment where Brian Laundry was looking an officer in the face outside of the Moab incident. He gets back on September first in the in the in the white in the white van, yep. goes camping a few days later. Then Monday the thirteenth, he vanishes. Northport police say that we know where he is, but they didn't know where he was because they thought it was Roberta returning home in the Mustang. And, and, and here we are, and now we are just awaiting word at this time. Right now, it's uh, for people that have found this stream after the fact, right now it's 648 Eastern Time, October 25th, 2021. As of right now, we don't know the cause of death, and we don't know when perhaps a, a forensic examiner like an anthropologist know, like, can definitively say when, in fact, Brian Laundrie died. But 
I mean, we now know a little bit more as to how he was able to to elude be, police. Yeah, 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 or if not elude police, just go out for this hike and no one know about it really, rather than 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 Chris and Roberta. But again, you're talking about the Bertolino statement. So there's just um that that whole week, that whole week is is under the microscope still here in late October, coming up on Halloween here. Very, very, cl- very close to the end of the month of, of the second month of the story, and or you could argue the third month really of the story, at least the second that it's been on 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 our on our That's radar, true. and we're that that week is is just when we look back at this story months and years from now, and you know that it is going to in various forms of you know uh, in various different ways uh, and you know what i'm talking about when people look back on this story one day whether it's in a documentary form or whatever it might be when it's examined that week is going to be the week that they zoom in on the calendar and say this is the week where everything happened where 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 or at least as far as brian laundry's disappearance this is this i mean police saying that they knew where he was the mustang being returned home the friday night when we were live here for hours on end and, and talking about how and Josh Taylor called in to WFLA now and admitted on WFLA now in front of, I think it was a quarter million people were watching in that moment or so. And Josh Taylor admitting to, to us here on stream, we don't know where Brian Laundry is. Um, that week is going to be under the microscope for, for many, many, many months, years, if not even more than that, um, as people look back on, on this story. And that Friday, I was down in Northport. I mean, it was, you were. It, was yep. it was a circus outside the home that night. That was, you know, there was a handful of, of, of TV crews, reporters. The protesters showed up that night. And that was really the first time, JB, where Northport police, or sorry, where, where the laundry parents, you know, took time to talk to Northport police was, oh, no, our son is missing too. And we all remember the statement that came out that night from the attorney for the Schmidt Petito family saying, no, he's not missing, he's hiding. And, and, and now we, we know... He's, he's been dead. We don't know how long he's has been since he became deceased. How he died remains under investigation, but given what they've said about the uh, partial remains being discovered, I think, JB, we're on the same page to think that he probably was dead shortly after he vanished to the park, I and mean, I will just wait to see when the anthropologists can try to piece that timeline together for us. But like you said, those first that first week from the, the missing person report for Miss Petito on the Saturday to that next Friday, those six days will be forever scrutinized what happened during those days. And here's another twist to this story. The news today that Northport Police spokesperson Josh Taylor says that Wednesday they thought it was uh, Roberta returning. They thought it was Brian returning home, and instead they mistook him for his mother. Let's see one more. There it is, Elizabeth Flower. Uh, hashtag, hey, Justin, when will we know the cause of death? Big, I, big question. There's no set timeline on this, uh, Elizabeth. We do know the remains turn over to an anthropologist, try to do more uh, analysis of this. Um, I was honestly surprised, JB, that they positive ID'd him within 24 hours last week. We, we, mean, were, all, we were all Justin, shocked we, Justin, by we, that. I mean, I was, I was, so I had gotten down there to the park. I was near where uh, our colleague Allison was reporting, and we'd seen the tweet from Brian Enton. And I'm, so all, I was, all, so all, the, all the, I'm like, it was that moment where it was like, you know, it was quiet out there, radio silence. We all got that push alert from the FBI being like, wait, it is him. And it was, uh, so I think we we're all surprised that we, we got the positive ID so quickly from the dental records, according to the FBI. As for a official cause of death for Brian, uh, just given what we've reported on how the remains were discovered, it, it could take some time. Uh, but obviously, JB and myself and our team here will, will, will stay on top of this. And as soon as there is an update, we'll let people know. But it, it could in my estimation, take longer to learn how he died than we, we learned, sadly, how Gabby was, was strangled to death uh, was in maybe, what, a month after she was identified. So This is um, Justin Justin and I. This is our first time on stream together since that. So I, I'll just share, I, too, was shot, yeah. very, very surprised. But at the same time, with the prevalence of this case, the high priority and high profile of this case, I'm sure every means that they could as far as expediting those dental records and getting a thorough dental review back quickly yeah. there and there has to be enough indistinguishable characteristics in those dental remains for them to say with certainty with the fbi's name and emblem on that release this is brian laundry and, and so look, so for all the folks and listen uh, i i know and justin knows we both know how many comments that there are people saying it's i don't think brian is deceased we my, see my them my sister called and said that to me like the night after i'm there reporting 
reporting on this on scene. I told my sister, no, like your sister he, who's been following the story. She's asked me that same question. Is, is he really, this is, I said, Sarah, this is what the FBI is telling us. They've, you know, <laughs> so it, it just, people have had these oddities in this story. I've let people scratch in their head, JB. I think it's yeah. part of the reason so many people, friends I know across the country, you as well, have been following this closely. And I assured my sister and others, I said, no, this is from the FBI that they have enough evidence to say he, he, is, he is dead. I have had others come up to me in person and say, JB, I don't think he's dead. And I, I, I understand that there's just, and this, this goes back to, and let me explain why so many people are saying this. First and foremost, we watch way too much Netflix, way too much Hulu, way too much HBO. Okay, we're, we're, we're there, I think that we are a media obsessed country and I'm speaking, yes, about the United States, but even other countries around the world, uh, watching shows, Squid Game. Okay, there's just way where the unbelievable is to be expected. They just think that this is going to play out like a television show. But also at the same time, it's, it goes back to all of the, the moments of sheer disbelief throughout this story. More than any story that I've ever covered in my career, and I'm being very candid with our audience here, I have never seen so many moments of, of an unexpected occurrence actually occur. Uh, I still, I still to this day, I talk with my wife at home, I still cannot believe there was a moment that Friday night, and I'll share this with our viewers, there was that moment on Friday night, September 17th, where I was in the newsroom, I was about to go home for the night, and... We were waiting, but we had heard that there was a lot of commotion at the house and we were preparing a live stream and there was, and we were trying to get the live feed up from the laundry home because we heard that it was a zoo. We heard it was a circus and the feed comes on and we see, we see media, we see the public, we see demonstrators with signs, with bullhorns, with megaphones on the front lawn of the laundry home, there was more distance between me and this camera yep. than there was between the, 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 fr the front door, where there was about the same distance between me and this camera right here than there was to the front door of the home to where people were standing on Chris and Roberta's property. That's how, that's how crazy that night was. There are just, there's so many moments in this story where there was just so many just unbelievably unexpected occurrences like that one, like so many others, including this one here tonight where police, it's a case of mistaken identity upon the, the return with the return of the Mustang and it's police mistaken uh, Roberta Laundry for Brian and not Chris Laundry for Brian. There's just so many moments like that here in this story. And that is why, bringing this all back full circle, I think that's a big reason why there are so many people out there that still tweet at me that that go over to my WFLA JB Instagram and Facebook and say, JB, I don't care what you say, Brian Laundry isn't dead. But folks, it's the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It's the FBI yep. with every expert that they have, okay? This is, this is the, the top, really, law enforcement agency in, in the country, okay? And, and with the high profile, this, they, they have any examiner, federal examiner that they want able to look at these dental remains. And for them to put it out so quickly is even more indicative that it was indistinguishable that those remains did, in fact, belong to Brian Laundrie and that Brian Laundrie, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, is deceased. I know that there's going to be so many commenters saying, I don't believe that, but we're staying rooted in reality. It's the FBI confirming that Brian Laundrie is deceased. The family has come to terms with it, according to Bertolino. Bertolino himself shed they're a couple of tears on it. Privately, there won't be a funeral, that they're just you know processing this for having lost their son. And it goes back to the fact that they searched that park in and out for how many weeks, Jay, until it was literally the, the day after the park reopened, the parents decided to go back over there and they helped so they helped investigators stumble upon these items, the backpack, the notebook, and then... I get it. So of all the yeah. people to find that bag, you're telling me that it's Chris Laundry that it, you're telling me? And, I, I for, guess... For, for law enforcement, fair, I mean, they've said because it was the, the weather conditions being the water. underwater there that that might have hampered efforts with any canines or any search teams to locate these items. Uh, but again, people have raised suspicion about how the parents you know, stumbled upon these items there on that Wednesday morning, and then by the next day, by 6 o'clock, we, we know that he's 
passed away and those are his remains there so it's like you said it's it's been expect the unexpected since we've been on this story for the last almost two months now jb and but again those first few days that first week after nicole schmidt reported her daughter missing will be under so much scrutiny for days, months, and years to come as, as people continue to analyze and piece together what happened. And I've referenced back, you know, my, my first conversation with Josh Taylor on that Monday and him saying, well, he's not cooperating to the level we want him to be. I can't really tell you. He wasn't a suspect or person of interest at that point. And then, again, that moment on Thursday where the chief said, we know where he is. We now know is based on this incorrect intel he had received from his officers on Wabasso Avenue there, mistaking him for his mother and... We're all still here scratching our heads all these weeks later. And let's not let. Uh, and are, Justin, are you familiar with the with the death of of Elisa Lam at the Cecil Hotel? And and it was it was a story that was brought back. I remember, but it was a story that was brought back into into the mainstream uh, by the Netflix series that that went into the death at the Cecil Hotel. Uh, let me just let me just share this for 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 our viewers, okay? Um, that when people ask JB, what's what are some of the other stories that that you remember that that rise to the level of public fascination as far as a mystery? And this is this was a mystery. Who was you know? How did Gabby Petito die? First and foremost, where was Gabby Petito? Then it became how did Gabby Petito die? Then it became who murdered Gabby Petito? Then it became Brian Laundry. <laughs> where is Brian Laundry? And then it became, of course, now how did Brian Laundry die? All of these mystery-based questions, and this is what uh, online sleuthing uh, has contributed to, as far as trying to collaboratively put together evidence on channels like you know Reddit and Discord and so many other places, um, trying to collaboratively community-based crime solving, right? Trying to come together and aiding law enforcement. Uh, in coming to, you know, trying to find out the truth. I remember earlier on in this story, uh, there were people that were going through frame by frame of Yellowstone webcam footage to try to spot the van. I mean, um, that's not something that, that many law enforcement agencies are going to be able to click the space bar over and over again and go through every frame of Yellowstone National Park and look for one vehicle. That was the community coming together and trying to find that one vehicle at an ex one of the largest parks that there is, and talking about Yellowstone, but and but let me go back to the death of uh, of Elisa Lamb because that that's the one that to me rises to that level of just uh, of online sleuthing and, and public fascination. And let's not forget that that police did make a mistake in the Elisa Lamb case when they did not look in the in the water in the in the water tower. Um, the um the 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 water the water um container on the on the top of the building that they went up there to the roof and and folks who who know about the Elisa Lamb story know or, or know exactly what I'm talking about I know that's not an enormous amount of our audience but you look it up uh, the police made a big mistake in that story and I'm just I'm just pointing out that with with a case of such high profile there is precedence out there and there have been so many cases in the past where there, where there have been law enforcement mistakes this one feels enormous now and there there are some folks that are that are in seeming disbelief that roberta laundry could be mistaken for brian but there have been other mis police mistakes and police errors in high profile cases mistakes happen they happen it, it this one happened here you have josh taylor admitting today that this mistake occurred uh, but uh, Bottom line is, is what we have here is, um, is, is, a, is a transparent admission of a mistake by the Northport Police Department. Does it change anything? If Okay, let's, let's end out on this, Justin, because I know that you have to get to work for our 11 o'clock news tonight. Yeah. The question really is now, if police did know that the return of the Mustang on Wednesday, September 15th, if they did say, oh, wait, that's, that's Roberta Laundry. Where's Brian? And then they, that accelerates their timeline by 48 hours. That's a two-day difference between when the search really began and it was a widely known disappearance of Brian Laundry. It was where the, sat that, the Saturday was the first day they really went out to well, the park. Right, so yes, an extra, that, another, that, another that's night, true. It was yep. more discovered on Friday. And, and then, then the it was, next morning is when that massive canvassing of the... Does that again. two to three day... Does those, do those two to three days make a difference when, when all the facts of this story are laid out in the future? If they did know, if, if this mistake doesn't happen, if this mix-up doesn't happen, is there a chance that Brian Laundrie isn't deceased? Is, is now a big lingering question 
that people are go going to want answered was this police mistake in any which way, shape, or form, we'll, we'll never know. We'll probably never will know because Brian disappeared on now we know the 13th, according to Bertolino. That's where he went for the hike. And he was already, by the time that the Mustang was brought home on the 15th, he's he's already he's already gone for about a period of roughly roughly 48 hours so does the extra two to three days make a difference it certainly doesn't look good that garrison comes forward on that thursday and says we know where he is and then friday they they say we don't know where he is taylor calls in a wfla now and says we don't know where he is but will those couple of days make make a difference we probably will never know like I said, what I want CJB is these documents unredacted. I don't know when that'll happen, but I think us here at Channel 8 and WFLA will still push to get those reports at some point to hopefully maybe provide some more clarity and some answers, especially in this first crucial week when this story became a national obsession. Obsession indeed. We are still talking about it, and there'll be still little... You know, things we uncover well, well, as we keep going and, and we'll and, stay on top of it. And, and uh, the reason we're staying on top of it as much as we are, this is our coverage area. Yeah. Sarasota County, Northport, that's our coverage area. You turn on your NBC station, you find WFLA News Channel 8. And, of course, you find WFLA's Justin Checker. Justin, uh, what are you going to be working on tonight? And uh, I think we're going to be following up on this this development here. Excuse me, I you know, put in a request, try to speak to Josh Taylor one on one. Tonight. I don't don't know if that's going to happen, but good we good work on your end, JB, to confirm this. And again, just to wrap up, it's again we're looking at those first few days in this investigation between when Gabby's reported missing to when the official report came in for Brian Laundry the following Friday. Again, this this breaking development we've reported on the last couple of, uh, minutes here on the stream is that Wednesday they're saying they mistook Brian for his mother returning home. And that is why the chief made that definitive comment on the Thursday that we know where he is. We now know he'd already been out at the reserve for three, four days at this point. And again, there's still unanswered questions about how Brian died or, or when he might have died. Uh, and we'll still hopefully get those answers at some point. But this, again, is just clarifying why Northport police felt they knew where he was when clearly he was already out there in the reserve and never came home. WFLA staying on this story, folks, as far as asking the right questions and hopefully providing you with with answers. That's our commitment to you, eight on your side. We're wrapping up our live stream here on WFLA Now, but as a reminder, the latest for you, including this story and this new development, it's on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. I'm going to be heading over to my various social media accounts. Uh, I want to catch up on some of what you're saying on Instagram with hashtag AJB. I, I, I missed a, a lot of hashtag AJB questions and comments on, on Twitter. I'm going to try to catch up uh, because this was a breaking development uh, my my attention was just on some of the comments that were trickling in uh, that we had here into our system, the ones that you saw here on our live stream. So I'm going to try to catch up on some of the things that you're saying. What do you think in response to this story? Roberta Laundry, Roberta Laundry being mistaken for Brian Laundry upon the return of the Mustang on Wednesday, September 15th. Let me know. You can follow me on my social media accounts at WFLAJB on Facebook. Twitter or Instagram, and I'll try to, to chime in with, with some of the commenters and some of the viewers there. And of course, the latest for you for our, from our award-winning WFLA News Channel 8 team, it's on WFLA.com and also the WFLA app.